here today with Lionel McCauley, and we are at the River Brewing Company inside a live working brewery right here in Victoria Falls. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, Lionel, please tell us a little bit, first of all, um, about you and where you're from and uh, what inspired you to get into brewing. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the River Brewing Company. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'm uh, American originally. Born in Pennsylvania, raised in Alaska, and uh, learned how to brew in Alaska back in the day through uh, home brewing and a friend of mine that went commercial. So then, yeah, I eventually wandered to Zimbabwe after several other stops around the world brewing. Uh, last place was Norway as a literature teacher, and then eventually came to Zimbabwe as a teacher as well. And then, uh, yeah, got sick of grading Shakespearean essays. So it's earned my craft a beer, yeah. That's a pretty incredible story, and um, the fact that you ended up in Zimbabwe as well, and you know, we're very grateful that you've ended up here in Victoria Falls, and we got some of the best beer on tap right here in our beautiful city. So um, tell us a bit more about the River Brewing Company, and how, you know, how do you guys conceive this? And yeah, so we started brewing about six, seven years ago in Kristen Bank outside of Harare to see the market, see what, how people reacted. And then eventually, through my local partner here, we decided Victoria Falls was going to be our home. That was about three years ago since we opened, and uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been going great. Now, like everybody else, um, the pandemic has obviously been tough because here in Victoria Falls, we're pretty reliant on tourism. Mm. But you guys have pivoted quite well. You're not only um, selling here in Victoria Falls, um, you're selling into the Harare market as well. How have you managed to manage that from Victoria Falls? Yeah, it's, it's always a trick getting cold beer and everything we require for kind of high-end beer, non-pasteurized, non-filtered. Thank you. It's about time. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. You know, Enjoy. for everything. But Harari's been really good to us, too, because like every business in Vic Falls, this COVID time, I mean, we've gone from how many people a year through our beautiful town to nothing. I mean, in the last year, we've been open here for just a couple months, the last year. So it's definitely taken its toll. But this town's resilient. Zimbabwe is so resilient. So you can see the light at the end of the tunnel now, their vaccination and beer sales and our, everybody getting back to work, too, because we just have such a beautiful town that we want, we want to continue to develop it. Awesome. And I, that's what we just love about this town. Everybody we speak to, and obviously we're residents here ourselves, but everybody's positive. We're a year in. We haven't had many tourists through our doors, but we're ready to get back into action. Now, to help us drown our sorrows, if you like, <laughs> we've been poured um, some beautiful looking beverages here. Could you tell us a little bit um, about what's, what's in front of us? Sure. So one of our, our big things about being a brewery, if you think about craft, craft breweries, it means local. So one of the things we're trying to emphasize here with our beautiful soil in this country, but a lot of the farms not, you know, producing what they once did, is to try to bring local ingredients back into beer. Um, we love our Belgian malt, <laughs> you know, we're Belgian, Belgian fans. We love our Pacific Northwest hops, our German hops, but we want to utilize our farms here and get way more ingredients into each pint. So this is a prime example. This is a resurrection ale, which is grown from the resurrection bush, um, one of our indigenous local plants, a wonderful plant that the first little drops of rain, it greens out um, and has its medicinal properties. I don't know if that counters the alcohol, but it has medicinal properties. So this is one of our experimental new beers to, to really try to start working with beers that can't be created anywhere else in the world. You know, I don't know of resurrection ales anywhere else. Um, and that gives it a unique thing, but also has a story behind it with farmers. So every time we buy five kgs of resurrection, it goes into somebody's pocket that we know, that we can see growing. So that's one of our exciting ideas coming out. And the next year, we're pushing it a lot more. Well, I can't wait to just get my lips around this because after that story, it just makes it that much more worthwhile. So I'm just going to taste it. The smell is amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Fruity, fresh, delicious, and plenty of alcohol, which is great. Um, now, tell us about your one. So I'm drinking a Jack Tar Porter, named after the Jack Tar locomotive that helped build the bridge. Um, it's a kind of more traditional porter. It's kind of a cross between an English porter and an American porter with some more hops and late edition hops. 
And uh, in hot weather, you don't think of dark beer a lot of the times as being popular in Northern. But we've scaled this down to what, Michael, 5%? 5%, yes. And it has a, it has a good local following. So I was surprised that dark beer could do well in this environment. Besides for breakfast, of course, because it's a great breakfast beer. But um, yeah, so it's more of a traditional one of our ales. But uh, we found a good local following in the, the dark beer world in 40 degree heat. Awesome, awesome. Well, um, before we finish off, I just want to come across to you, Michael, if you don't mind. And um, please tell us, you, uh, I can see this must be one of the funnest places to work in town. Um, what made you want to come and work for a brewing company? Well, that's, that's very true. This is one of the, the finest places to work for. Uh, I was just growing up with a background where my granny was a brewer, like traditionally days to make um, sorghum beer, you know, chibuku or scud. Yes. So I kind of related with the, the mindset. They used to um, uh, brew um, at home, then sell across town um, in Pulue or big cities. So I, I used to watch when I was growing up. Then uh, I didn't know I was gonna grow into something like this. And uh, being uh, the first um, brewery in the town, I was like, uh, why not? Why not jump into this um, big idea and grow myself into it and take over from my granny's footsteps? That's an awesome, awesome story, Michael. Mm. Thanks for sharing it with us. And um, Lionel, I can see we're going to have to be doing a few more of these with you guys because there's clearly a lot of stories behind these walls. And, you know, um, we'll, we'll talk about that in future, in future chats. But for now, cheers. Cheers. And thank you very much for the hospitality. Thank you, Michael. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy.